and look at just how tight it is at the top of the Premier League table now. Liverpool and Manchester United only separated on goal difference and the two face off on the 17th of January and by then Manchester United will have played their game in hand against Burnley so could be top so yes it's all getting very exciting at the top of the Premier League table and joining me to discuss both of those teams and plenty more on today's show the Manchester City correspondent for The Athletic Sam Lee former Premier League defender Chris Samba and of course Wrighty is here once again Wrighty you had a big smile on your face watching yeah. that VT because it's getting very exciting isn't it it is Kells and the only ones that's really missing out I can't say Arsenal with their current form but Chelsea but other than that the Top of the league is starting to take that shape, the, the, the protagonist, the normal protagonist in there. But like, yeah, it is tight and it is close. And, you know, the emergence of City, United, all of a sudden, you know, two months ago, for it, you'd, you wouldn't have seen them up there. You can't count Tottenham out of it. But <laughs> it's really, I'm quite pleased that it's like it is now. It's very tight. And it's up to now a team to actually say, button down their actions and say, right, let's get going now. This is it after Christmas. Let's try, let's string some um, some good performances together and see if we can get some daylight with us and the other teams. Well, Liverpool are, of course, the team to beat, the defending champions. Chris, what have you made of them recently? Because it hasn't been the type of performances and the run of form that we've been used to for Jurgen Klopp's side. Yeah, it's been a difficult difficult period for them, you know, with the injury. You know, I think uh, with the spine missing, you know, Van Dijk, Matip, Joe Gomez been absent, you know, Fabinho had to drop into the defence, so now he's missing in the in midfield. So it's, it's been difficult, you know, Diego Jota was a big part of this early success and now he's also, also sidelined. So it, it's difficult, but the top is still top of the league, so be credit to them. And it's a little bit scary because you have to think, oh, they're going to come back and going to get running, you know, and, and this could be <laughs> difficult. You don't want them to pull off like like last season. You want it to keep exciting for, for us fans. Is that something we have to remember, Sam? The fact that we all talk about these problems, the fact that Liverpool aren't the machine that we've maybe become accustomed to, but they are still top of the league. Yeah, of course, but it's, it's like teams like Liverpool, Man United previously, Man City throughout 2020, kind of held up by their own high standards. And as soon as they dip below that a bit, you start thinking, what's going on here? This must be a disaster, yeah. what's going wrong? But it's just all of those injuries, as Chris said. But also, only three teams in the Premier League era have retained the title successfully. Oh. And only one in the last 10 years. So it's almost like the intangibles. There's just nothing you can do after you've won the title, generally, to, to keep that level up. So it's already hard. The deck's already stacked against you. Everyone wants to beat you anyway. Liverpool, even the season when they didn't win the title the year before, when they got the 97-ish points finishing behind the City, they were still going all out. So they're going to be tired. Mm. It's a crazy league this mm. season. And then you throw those injuries in as well. Uh, they're, they're doing amazingly to be yeah. what they are. And what they are is actually top of the league. Like, <laughs> they won't be far from the, the top at the end the, of the season. The thing, of course, because of the quality that they've got. But when you look at the players and the, the form, you, yes, you, you, you're hoping that Salah and Mane and, and Firmino continue to, to nick those goals what, what you need. You know, like Mane, I thought that... Walker's Peters played fantastically against him, kind of like really subdued him. But the fact is, is that when you've got your forwards and the great forwards who are not firing and you haven't got Jota, like you mentioned there, Chris, to come in and help, Minamino's, it's not quite happened for him to come in and nick that goal. And then you've got a, the defence. I wouldn't say it's leaky, but if I'm playing against that particular Liverpool defence, if I'm Wood Prowse and Danny Ings, we saw them construct a beautiful goal you are feeling like you've got more of a chance. And when you look at Liverpool, who are still trying to play out from the back and play how they want to, into a Thiago, they've still got to find these form in respects of his fitness and get up to speed so as he can then get those front players going. It's not quite clicked in that way. And I think that the form of those players, if their form gets better, then get a bit more confidence and then probably start seeing a little bit more from Liverpool. But at the moment, Kells, this is the time to try and put Liverpool under pressure. Do you think that it's maybe a result of the fact that they, we have seen them go full throttle for so long now that maybe this tiredness, this slight lapse was inevitable, perhaps? Does that always happen to top teams? I, I can't say it's in, inevitable. You know, if, if you want to say you're top teams, you have to be able to repeat. You know what I mean? Well, two times, every time be contending. Um, for them, I think the issue is because the lack of confidence maybe in defence mm is there. So it, it, it can be difficult, example, uh, 
when you look at Trent Alexander and, and Robertson to go forward if you think in the back of your mind that you have to protect mm. your centre backs and that, that can be also an issue. Having Fabinho in front of the defence maybe reassure also the team. Mm. So I think it's a, a balance with the team is a little bit off balance and I think that's a problem at the moment. So yeah, it's a great time, like mm. you can say, to put that team under pressure right now. Let's it, just take a look. Oh, sorry, no, I was going to say, it sounds like a little thing, doesn't it? Off balance. Mm. But these are well oiled machines. Yeah. Yeah. We saw with Pep's Man City and Klopp's Liverpool, the reason they get nearly 100 points is because they've got fantastic players, but it's not just, you know, Salah's getting them over the line with the odd goal. Everything's constructed mm. perfectly to work. Everything, you know, from the way it comes out from the goalkeeper to the centre backs, mm. the balance of the midfield, the way mm. they get the ball in the spaces at the, exactly the right time. They're already on the half turn. They're looking mm. at, they, you know, they can break mm. through into the yeah. spaces. Everything works from back to front. And then you take out all of the centre, all of the centre backs at Liverpool, all of them, and you've dropped the two best midfielders that Liverpool have got in Henderson and and Fabinho into the back line. You've then got problems in the midfield as well. Is that a bit no similar wonder to what we saw at City, maybe exactly. Last season with they took Fernandinho yeah. out, yeah. and then they put him back and did all right. But it wasn't the same as you know with Laporte being out. And then they had the big problem in midfield with Rodri just coming in, new to the Premier League, in front of him, more counter attacks. Rodri was coming in thinking, I don't have to do that many counter attacks. Mm. And every week there was people just running past him. He wasn't used to it. Mm. And it's, it's going to be the same thing with Liverpool. Like a couple of the cogs are out of place. And then you get the knock on and then you get the front three who are so good, mm. just lacking a bit of confidence because maybe they're not getting the ball at the right time mm. in the right spaces. Like Trent Alexander-Arnold's a bit off form, so the ball's not coming in quite mm. as predictably as before. Just all of a sudden you just, you stood in front of defenders thinking, yeah. where do we go now? Mm. Rather than you're already in behind them in previous seasons. And then think, the confidence goes. The thing with it is as well, is that people got to understand is you're not going to let Liverpool just continue to get on and do what they do what makes them flow, just like they, we're going to City. Like, if you let City do that, you'll get absolutely obliterated. So you have to try and stop them. We see the people talking about Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now, Trent is continuing to do what he does, but now people are catering for him. We've got to stop that supply so as that doesn't go in there, so as we can disrupt what they do. So then when it's not going to the falls, like you say there, Sam, then they're starting to think, well, when's it coming? And then they get a little bit may maybe more anxious. And then the team can see that, yeah, there is a little bit of a weakness. If we attack them here, we might... And so then what happens is, is that it comes down to you actually having to still play very well because teams are trying even harder to try and stop you and nullify you. And then when that's not happening and then you're not getting it from one of your forwards who all of a sudden can do that, then you're starting to think, oh, that's when the confidence starts to seep away. When we look at the Liverpool team and where the injuries are as an ex-defender do you think that they would have had the same problems had it been Salah, Mane or Firmino injured what do you think the impact is on the fact that it's been the goalkeeper it's been their arguably best centre-half um, it, it's going to still be a problem because at the moment the problem is they can't see goal and they look like a team they're going to come see goal but if you have the injury in the front up front then you have the problem where's the goal going to come from to win yeah. the game so I think it's a it's a right balance, like we say. And also, like Rachi was saying, and Sam as well, the amount of repetition that you do with the same group, the mm. same players constantly uh, make it a well-hauled machine. The fact that you don't have someone like Van Dijk, Matip or Joe Gomez also take another weapon away, what is the aerial threat? Mm. You know, uh, if you, you, you notify and trade Alexander-Arnold or, or Robertson or in the back, have, uh, the front three have a bad game. Set pieces is also a solution to them. But mm. right now, they don't have all <clears throat> their weapons available. And that's, that's a difficulty. It comes down to the spine of the team being affected as well, doesn't it? In the same way with Fernandinho at Manchester City, the fact that Fabinho has now been pulled out of position yeah. at Liverpool as well, they've lost that spine a little bit. Yeah, well, that's it. This is exactly what Chris was saying earlier on yeah. about the spine. And yeah. You, you question then about the forwards. Like, so, if for argument's sake, if Salah had got injured all season, it would have been a loss. But then he put Jota in. Mm. And if everything else is working, yeah. it's all right. So the season before when City, lo they lost De Bruyne. You think, how could they play without De Bruyne? But everything else was fine. They put Bernardo Silva in there, fantastic player. You'd never known there was an issue. Laporte was injured. So you take Fernandinho, you put him back there. Then you've got a problem in midfield. Sane was injured. So you've got a problem where they haven't got the width on the left because they had problems with the left backs. Mm. And all of a sudden, it's only a couple of players. But exactly. everything yeah. starts changing around. Mm. But like, if I had just been just Salah on his own, huge loss, but they could probably have done without him. But take Van Dijk out and then all the other centre-backs, you've got problems in midfield, 
and then the whole thing starts to fall apart a bit then. But like I say, falling apart, it's still top of the league. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of why I asked you that so early in the conversation, mm. so we don't get too carried away. But let's take a look at Liverpool's results at this point this season compared to the same stage last season, and we know just how impressive they were. But this, I think, Brighty, really highlights, doesn't it, the difference in the team. And maybe it's the difference in the league in general as well. Do you think other teams catching them up as well? Um, I think I have to still say that the injuries have cost Liverpool and, the, and their fluidity, without a shadow of a doubt. Because we're talking about if the forwards, if they do miss a forward, but they've got their full quota of defence, uh, defensive players, then you feel like we know that we're solid at the back. Because they're still scoring. Look at yeah. that, 42 goals last season, 37. It's, it's only five yeah. difference, but there is a bit of a bigger difference there in terms of the goals conceded. That's what it is. Yeah. You see, so, like I said, with the, with the forwards missing, like, if the forwards were missing, they're not scoring, you know you're not conceding, so you're not going to be losing the game. So you don't lose that confidence knowing that, oh, no, we ain't scored, so we're not going to win. We know that... Because, like, when we played with Arsenal, um, we knew that if we score, there's a very good chance we'd probably win that game because we're so confident in our back five. And I think that Liverpool were the same. So it doesn't make too much of a difference if the front man's not there. And we saw with Jota coming in, he kind of, like, was an able... Mm. Deputy. And this is why I worry for him because of Minamino at the moment. Um, I saw um, Shakiri come on. It didn't quite make a difference. But in the back, if you can keep the back solid and then they can maybe nick something at the front, they could still win games. But now we're seeing that there is a little bit of a, a weakness with Liverpool in who's playing, where they're playing. And the fluidity has gone because Fabinho's back in there, Henderson was back in there. What I thought is because he wanted to them to continue to play out from the back, to try and still do what they normally do to win games. But it's just a different personnel and lack of form. Mm. In particular, they've struggled on the road as well, as we can see from looking at this graphic here, Chris. Just two wins away from Anfield this season. Two defeats, admittedly, but look at all of those draws and against teams like the likes of Fulham and Brighton, teams that they would have expected to win their games that they would have won last season. Yes, it's very unlike Liverpool. To, uh, I mean, away from home, they've been very good last season, so it's, a, it's surprising, but we, we were expecting that also because of what is missing at the back. And that's, that's where you see the difference, uh, getting a draw and a win. Those little details that, that make a draw a win, and at the, at the moment, they don't have that. No, it yeah. doesn't. They're, they're not defending horribly, actually. No. I mean, yeah. what was the difference? 21 goals conceded this season, 14 last year. Yeah. Mm. I know you can't just say take the game out, but that's just the Villa game. Mm. Take the yeah. seven out of that. Yes. Since Van Dijk's got injured, the defensive performance hasn't been horrible. I just think it's more about the balance and it's what you lose, and they're just not quite playing mm. the same way. Like you say, those small margins, all of a sudden it's one all or it's nil nil because yeah. you, you're not scoring the goals. And it's just, it's just little things like that. And that's why yeah, they are still top. And, and you know how difficult is it to keep the same level of expectation yeah. when you have a Van Dijk and a, yeah. a Mati Papera like that playing together and one gets injured. Normally, you have a third one that can come in and it's not too bad. Yeah. But to replace both of them, yeah. that's very mm. difficult tough. things to do. It's tough for, for Liverpool to still be top of the league um, with the... Remember, they lost the keeper for a while as well. You know, for them to not be at the top of the league... It's, it's still an unbelievable achievement they're doing right now. But what's good, what they're going to have to call upon now is their experience, Sim simply because when you are the champions like they have been and when you have dominated like they have been, you have to find that, you have to find that attitude and that, that intensity again because you have to, still have to be Liverpool, you still have to be difficult to beat. And you have to say that once the forwards start nicking something again, it will then give confidence to, back to the rest of the team the league but as I said at the top of the show just how long for because Manchester United really breathing down their necks now could be above them yeah. by the time they face off on the 17th how much are you looking forward to that game writing well I think it's great for well obviously Man United fans around the world will be absolutely delighted um, because the problem with Manchester United for a while was inconsistency in what they were doing you didn't know what Man United were going to turn up simply because of the way they play you know Man United will play they'll defend deep They'll hit people on the break. And if it's not going great, they've got brilliant players to bring off the bench. Now, what's happened is, is that something's happened with the mentality because they do seem a lot stronger in respect to their intensity and the, the, the form of the players. They're just mm. playing a lot better. And the players that are coming off the bench are making a difference. So what is going to be interesting to see from Man United is that if they do, and I do feel that they may, they may beat Burnley, if they do go top, is how they keep the consistency to stay there with teams like Liverpool and Manchester City 
and the Tottenham's and all the teams that's chasing them for them to continue to get those results. That's the only thing with Manchester United now. They're going to really have to go into the annals of their history to make sure that they tap into that staying there and sustaining and consistency. You talk there about consistency. You mentioned that word quite a few times. That's certainly something Manchester United have showed with their recent form. These are their last 10 Premier League results. No defeats, unbeaten, just two draws. Be honest, Sam, did you see this run of form coming for United, particularly maybe if we go back to that Spurs defeat earlier in the season? No. And it's United are one of the hardest teams to kind of nail down. Yeah. And the coverage is so... There's always a problem with United. So... You always get mad stats. So it was something like Solskjaer had got the best away record of like any United manager ever earlier in the season, but the home record wasn't there. Mm. And then things were going all right and then went out of the Champions League. You know, they won the Champions League game 5-0 at home against Leipzig, ended up going out of the group stage. Looks like a disaster again. All of a sudden, I mean, obviously we know where they are in the table, but I was shocked seeing that run mm. of results there. I, I wasn't expecting that. No, like you say, the, the Spurs game. But this, this season, it's just like snakes and ladders. Mm. But I'll be on next month and we don't know where City You've been doing too much Liverpool at home with your little yeah, boy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> But it's just, you never know what's going to happen. Like, we'll talk about Arsenal-Chelsea later on, but, you know, going into that game, mm. all of a sudden the, the, the fortunes have changed completely. Something's clicked for United and for the life of me, I can't tell you what it is. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. They've got good players. Great They've player. got a solid base. It's... But there's no, there's no disaster now. There's no Champions League exit that's undermined mm. them. There's no, oh, the home form's this, the home form's that. Everything has come together. But as Wright said, it's consistency. But the thing about this Burnley game is that will be the test for me. Mm. Because over the years, you know, the last five years, whenever United have had the opportunity to go and do something, they were expected to do something. I remember a few years ago when they had Ibrahim Rubic up front. They needed to beat Bournemouth to get into the, into the top four. Mm. And they drew at home with Bournemouth. When they beat City a couple of years ago, they had West Brom at home. They lost to West Brom mm. to give City the lead. When they played Villa last week, I thought, they're, they're not going to win this. And they did. Mm. And now they've got Burnley and it's like, OK, if they can get through that and they can go into yeah. the Liverpool game top, then we might be, OK, this, something's happening at United. But it just this season of all things, I don't know what's going to happen. And United of all teams as well. Like, mm. You just don't know what's around the corner. You could even say that about a missed opportunity with last night with the League Cup. Well, again, that's semi- always the thing, isn't it? Semi-final final for Solskjaer. Because they're doing no so problem. well, but then it's, oh, they always route to semi-finals, but mm. no further. You're never quite sure how good or how bad this United team are. It's always somewhere in the middle. But this season, with everything being so... It might be enough. It could be. Also, do we have to say this has been a good season for United? Because you've talked there about it being up and down, and it does feel like there's been quite a lot of negative press around Solskjaer and some of the runs prior to those 10 games that he kind of went on some of the results that were in there, the Spurs one that I mentioned before. But surely when we look at the league table and we look at those recent fixtures, we have to say it's a good season, do we? It's, 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 it's so <laughs> No one wants to, to answer about, this. This is the question that no one wants to answer. It's a puzzling team. You look at it and you try to put the piece together and you're not sure. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we were thinking Social was in trouble mm. when, when mm. after the exit of the Champions League. And suddenly we, we turn our head and they're top of the league. And when, just by showing your graphic, they look like champions. Yeah. You look yeah. at the graphics, that's a, that's a graphic of, of a champion. And they weren't bad draws either. Mm-hmm. Yes. City and, yeah. and, and just needs to be over yes. a longer spell, though, so They look like a champion, but before. as any of us have the confidence to say, like, yeah, yeah they believe Why? In... Why are you all sitting there without this confidence? Because I even see Wrighty, you're, mm. you're not sure either. It's only because um, this, this scenario here, Man United back in the day, it's, when they click into able to win a game to go top, you're almost thinking... That's it now. Man United have done it. They've got where they want to be. They know how to finish this off. But um, when you look at the consistency in, in those results, you can't, you can't knock it and say, well, it's luck here or there and there. They played well to do that. But in hardly any of those games going in, you could say, yeah, Man United are going to win this, no problem. They're going to do What we're seeing from Man United is a team of brilliant players who realise, for me, that, yes, we've got a chance of, of doing this. We can do this. And... A manager that you've got to give him some credit in respects of the man management and the way he's managed um, the team and Pogba's coming back into the team with all the stuff what happened with his agent. Um, Fernandez obviously is the leader in there. You can see that and Pogba playing his part in it. And you, for me, like Sam, I, I'm going to go with Sam. I'm going to say if Man United can now win that game against Burnley and show consistency once they get to the top, then yeah, you have to say that Man United have got a great chance of winning the league. I, I would say that <laughs> nobody's sure. I, I would As want. Yeah. Both I, would want you look I would want. I would want a clearer ID of 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 what Man United game is 
At the minute, what I know is that they have firepower and a great squad. But I'm a little bit struggling to, in position mm -hmm. with the ball, to have an idea of what they're trying really to do. I understand that they have the quality to hit <coughs> team on the counter, but in position against, like you say, the Burnley example, it's, it's, it would be a perfect mm -hmm. example and see what they do against a Burnley of a team. So it's going to be a low block. Low block. What, what is your strategy now? And I, I had difficulty to see that in the past. And that's where, they've, that's where Man United, when, when they, when they counter-attack teams, fantastic. But their problem is when a team does put in that low block. Like what we'll, we'll speak about City and what City have done now, what Pep has said is that we're going to just continue to pass till the opening comes and then we're going to try and um, exploit. But Man United's problem has been to try and break down that low block. If they can do then yes, Man United can win the league. What about Solskjaer?